Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create a graph in Unity. We're going to add the ability to update our graph in real time. Let's begin. So in the past two videos, we modified the graph visual interface to work with an object that implements the graph visual object interface instead of simple game objects. So each specific bar in our graph is now represented as a specific object. In doing so, we were able to add specific code to the graph visual object that manages each specific object. Here is the definition for the interfaces. As you can see, our main graph visual has a function to create a new visual object, and each iGraph visual object has a function to set that object's info. When calling this function, we are no longer creating a new object, so this makes it very easy to update our graph. So let's begin with a simple function to update a single value. We're going to receive an int for the index that we wish to update and an int for the value that we're going to set in that index. So here we are creating the graph visual object and adding it to this list. So we simply access the index on that list and we set the graph visual object info. And now we need to send the new info. So we can go up here and see how all of those values are calculated. So these are the various values. We send it a new anchored position then we have the position width, which is the X size, and then we have the tooltip text, which we calculate. So now in here, obviously we have a bunch of errors because inside this function, we do not have these values. So in order to calculate the graph position, we need to access the X size and the Y minimum and maximum. Those are calculated up here when we are first creating the graph. So for now, let's just store them as member variables. So go up here and store those values. And down here, we're going to store them as the member variables. Okay, so since we made these as member variables, we now can access the same values that were calculated up here, and we can access them in this function and use them to create the new X and Y position and the X size and so on. So just like this, we should be able to update a single value in our graph. So in order to test that, let's go up here into our awake and here, let's create a function periodic to test our update. The function periodic is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So let's create, which will trigger this action every, let's say, 100 milliseconds. And in here, let's just increase the very first value. So in here, define the value, start off at zero, and we're going to update our value. At index zero, we're going to give it value and then increase the value. So every 100 milliseconds, we're going to increase the value and update the value shown in our graph. So let's see if the very first bar is constantly increasing. Okay, there it is. The bar is constantly increasing. And if I pass the mouse over, you can see that the tooltip updates and the size is updating. Okay, so everything seems correct. But as you can see right now, the bar now goes past the graph borders. That is because we also need to update the maximum and minimum in order to rescale the graph if needed. If we change the scale, then we're also going to need to update every other point on the graph. So in here, let's first make a function to calculate the Y maximum and minimum. So instead of using the member variables that were calculated previously, we're going to calculate them inside this function. Now for this function, we want to return both the Y minimum and the Y maximum. So instead of setting a return value in here, we're simply going to return void and add some out parameters for the float Y minimum and a out for a float y maximum. If you're not familiar with the out parameter, it essentially lets you return more than one value from a function. So when we call this function, we can get both of these values as our return. So inside, we're going to copy the calculation code that we were using previously right here. So just like that, we are calculating the y scale. And up here, instead of having all of this code, we're going to first define a float for the y minimum and one for the y maximum. Then we're going to call the function and give it these values. So this function will do its calculations and put the correct calculated values back onto these variables. So we can now also go up here and get rid of the member variable since they will always be calculated. So let's test and everything should be working exactly the same as previously. And yep, there it is. Our graph is still working exactly the same. Okay, great. Now let's also go up here and define a private Boolean for the start Y scale at zero. 
and set it to true on our awake. We're making this as a member variable so that later we can add a function to easily modify this during runtime. And when we are calculating if the boolean value is set to true, then we do reset our graph. Okay. So back in our update value function, let's also grab the y minimum and y maximum. The same thing that we are doing when we are also creating the graph for the first time. So now we have the calculated y maximum and y minimum that we can use in here. Okay, great. And now we want to update the whole graph since the scale might change and all of them need to be updated. So we're going to copy all this code. And the difference is instead of creating a graph visual object, we're going to use the set graph visual object info in order to update it. So just like this, we should be able to see all of the values in the graph being updated. And if the scale does change, you can see all of them match that scale. So let's see. Okay, here it is. The first value, as you can see, it is increasing. And now when he gets up here, he will start to modify the scale and all the others should become smaller. And yep, there you go. As soon as that one reaches the top of the graph, which has some breathing room, as soon as he goes higher, all of the others, they still have the same values, but relative to this one, they are much smaller. So our graph is now correctly scaling all of the values. So now, as you can see, there is still an issue with our update. The Y axis labels are not updating to reflect the new scale. This one is saying the top is 117 when this bar is 429. So that is obviously not correct. So let's deal with that. Here on our create graph function, we are instantiating all of the labels on the Y axis, and we are simply adding them onto our generic game object list. So before we can update those labels, we need to first store those references. So we need to go all the way up here and make a new private list a list of rec transform and we're going to call this the y label list so in here when we instantiate a new label let's also add it to the list and just like that we have a list that contains references to every single label also we have to go up here on the cleanup when we are destroying all the game objects let's also clear this list Okay, so now that we have a list of references to the current labels, we can go back into the update function. So in here, let's cycle through the whole label list. And in here, we need to calculate the new label value. So let's see up here how it is calculated. The position will be the same, so all we need to change is really this line here. Now, in order to have this line, we also need the normalized value. So let's copy these. The separator count is the number of labels, so we can use the list count. And for the label list rec transform, it is on the list of index i. And yep, it's this simple. So let's test and we should be able to see the labels now correctly updating. Okay, so there's the bar increasing. And when it gets high enough, it should rescale the rest of the size and the labels. Yep, there you go. They are now correctly being rescaled. So if I place my mouse over, it's on 160. And as you can see, that one is always around 20% higher. So everything is now scaling correctly and the labels are also updating. So now let's just add one more simple thing. We only want to recalculate the Y axis labels and update the whole graph if the scale actually changes. If the scale of the graph doesn't change, then we only need to update a single value. So that's very simple to implement in here on our update. Before we modify the value in the list, let's calculate the Y minimum and Y maximum. And let's call this Y minimum before and Y maximum before. Then we set the new value, calculate everything. Yep, correct. And now in here, let's define a bool, bool Y scale changed. And this will be true if the Y minimum before is different from the Y minimum, or if the Y maximum before is different from the Y maximum. So then we do if the scale did not change, if it did not change, then we only want to update a single value. So that's this code in here. So if the scale did not change, then we are only going to update this value. But if the scale did change, then we're going to update everything. So this way we are no longer wasting resources by updating every single point and the labels when the Y scale does not change. So let's see if that is correct. And yep, as you can see, everything works perfectly fine. 
the scale of the others are not changing and this one is increasing and when it gets up there you will see everything else change accordingly. So there you have it, we have the ability to update our graph in real time. We can update any value and the code automatically resizes the graph to make sure all values fit inside. As always you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.